Hey, hey, folks. This is the wolf driver. The crazy wolf driver. <laughs> We're out here in the heart of the night at about, I don't know, after 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've been rocking and rolling down this trail for better than four hours. Uh, probably yeah, four and a half, maybe closer to five. We've got in uh, about nine miles plus and uh we're gonna see where we wind up we've done some paranormal explorations this evening really cool stuff we've got a hit on one of them we've got some awesome moonlit photography had an awesome run the dogs are doing fantastic they're loving the cooler weather that's moved in or the cooler temperatures just from the nighttime and from being along the river a lot cooler the humidity's dropped and they're fired up, running pretty good here, running actually really good. We've covered some pretty good ground in the past uh, hour or so. Been uh, doing with less stops because they haven't needed as much water because of the uh, cooler temperatures. And uh, we're rocking and rolling, basically. I'm your host, the Wolf Driver. And this is so cool. I hope you're able to join us. You might be anywhere around the world at this hour, especially, because I know most of the United States is asleep. Um, but I'm sure other parts of the world is up. We get viewers from all over. That's the magic of Facebook. So anybody that's out there, feel welcome to ask me any questions or leave me any comments, uh, etc. I can't always get to them when we're doing these kind of live broadcasts because they're kind of remote. So... The questions or comments don't always show up in my feed, but after we're done our trail for the day, uh, tomorrow, Sunday, whatever, I'll go back through and try to address any questions I might have missed that I wasn't able to get either through uh, the Facebook comments section or uh, do it on another show, another one of my shows. And uh, by the way, all the shows are always available on alldognetwork.com. Especially these ghost hunting shows are really cool. Uh, last week we were on the Ghost Town Trail in Pennsylvania, and uh, we got a hit on one of these. Not where we thought we would get a hit for paranormal stuff. It was actually uh, just on um, remnants of a structure along the side of the trail. Kind of like we went to tonight and didn't get a hit tonight. So it's pretty interesting. Didn't get a hit there tonight. Oh, actually, we, we went to a structure we didn't get a hit, but when we went to the remnants of the uh, bridge, we did get a hit here too tonight. So interesting stuff. Wolfpack is, uh, as I said, loving life. Uh, I believe we're going to meet our support vehicle in another mile or so. See where we're at. See if we can get any more ghost hunting in before uh, daybreak, and uh, see when we're ready to call it a night. I just want to make sure my biggest goal is to make sure the dogs got in their proper exercise and we had one of the most memorable times every time we try to go out. Just stuff. I, I like to say I collect uh, memories, not things. So these memories will last a lifetime and I try to savor them and save them through means like these Facebook live feeds and my video camera, etc. By the way, folks, you're looking at this through a night vision scope. It's real high-end technical stuff. It makes it possible, basically, for anyone to see in the dark. And uh, it's a U.S. military technology that was developed many years back now. Uh, we're on a Generation 3. Well, they might... Uh oh I thought Zara was picking up on speed. I don't think they're on Generation 4 yet. This is a pretty high-end uh, scope again. Um... But it really makes it possible. If we weren't broadcasting with it, we could just use it as a little scope. It's the size of a little bigger than the length of a cell phone. And uh, it would give us the opportunity to look into the woods and see everything out there. Because night vision sees with IR. And infrared is not always visible. It's not visible to humans. But when it's combined with the scope, it becomes visible. It just gives you more usable light to work with. So you might hear the bike suffering. I think it's got some bearings that are uh, going bad in it. And that occasionally happens. This equipment is pretty well ridden. And uh, we also try to maintain it as much as possible. As you can understand. 
So we're trotting at a good pace. I'm actually getting a little chill on me now, which is good. Means the dogs are comfortable for this time of year. We're not quite at daybreak yet. Probably got another hour. Looks like the sky's a little lighter, but I just think that's uh, light pollution from the close by city. Tonight we got a three-team crew. Usually when we got uh, we do paranormal hunt and we have a four-team crew, but uh, we couldn't get uh, any other team members to go with us tonight from the short notice. Our original team member, uh, Doug, he's our professional photographer. He uh, had a prior engagement, so he couldn't make it. But it's okay because I'm pretty well versed now through him and through uh, other learning experiences I had working with. Uh, we have IR cameras on board. I told you about the night vision scope to broadcast. We have IR cameras that we take pictures with to, again, document what we're doing. And uh, I got some beautiful shots tonight at the moon. We've got about three-quarters of a moon out there and, of course, the dogs and as we did our uh, ghost hunts. And you can see this is uh, quite a job. Actually, a bat just flew in front of me. There's a lot of bats out here. Well, they're pretty good about avoiding humans, but uh, you still want to be as careful as possible. We're in deep cover here. This is a th pretty thick canopy above me. And this area is really well protected. So, it's uh, cracking my knee. Sorry about that. <laughs> crispy, crispy. Chris B, is that you? Yes, sir. Where you be? What's up? Nada, man. Hey, a bike's making a lot of noise, like the back wheel. What, the ground? Yes, sir. Huh. Running okay, just making noise. Big clicking noise. Has it been doing the whole time? Yes, sir, pretty much so. And it wasn't doing it last time? I don't believe so. It's been in your house? Yeah, man. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, just something a bearing wearing out or something. Hey, where are we going next? What do we where we got any place to explore? Hey, coming up on Brunswick. Try that's where I have to grab a rat. And then you'll have four miles with Curtis. We uh I don't know, we could wrap it up here. I'm so tired. Where would you pick us up at if we uh, if we've got four miles? Is there anywhere before then? No. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll just keep on trucking. I hope this bike holds up, though. You know, back in the middle of nowhere, where we went with, I think, Doug the first time. Huh. I think we should switch to the red bike. Yeah, I can check it out when you get here. But you could. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, are you right up here? When you get to that parking lot where the bridge goes over the, the trail, if you can make a right in the parking lot. Radio when you get there. 
and I'll walk up there. Well, I'm at the gates now. I'm at the gates. What should I do from here? Oh, you can ride to underneath of the bridge and I'll walk up the hill. 10 4. So, he's telling us we got four more miles, dude. Oh, uh, yeah? Yep. How many? Four. Four, four. Yeah. He's going to take Rhett now. He can take the bike, yeah. He says he's going to walk up the hill. Come on, pretty. Where's he at? He's, down there. he's walking up. Here he is. Yeah, man. Oh, yes. That's cool. People can watch this. Dogs are doing great. I'm just... Hear that? It's popping. Poop, poop, poop. I think it's, I think it's the right side. Lean forward, Curtis. Ah. Yeah, and then once in a while you'll hear, like, the wheel drag. We got some hits. We did next. We went through a house. We did. Hey, hold the bike for a sec, dude. I got to scratch my back. <laughs> okay, folks. So here's the scene. Because we're short staffed tonight. Rhett, who's driving the other bike behind 